Hey Floss Tube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I'm back again today as promised to give a quick review of the HP Sprocket. It is a Bluetooth printer that you can print out small photo sized pictures. I decided to make this purchase after watching a video from Brenda the Sampler Stitcher and the Serial Starter, one of their most recent videos, and Brenda had a Polaroid version of the same printer. So I did a little research, read a few reviews, watched even a few YouTube videos um, concerning this printer and decided to go with the HP version. So I thought I'd take some time today to show you how it works, how you load the paper, um, and then go into how I plan to use some of the things. And I welcome any ideas any of you might have of other ways in which I can use these photos, other than the traditional way of just putting them in your wallet. So I went ahead and just printed off one so you could see the size of the photos. This is just a picture of a few stitch friends from the Sampler Gilded Georgia Retreat from last year. You may recognize a couple faces. But this is the printer. This is a case that I bought to keep it protected. This is a pack of 50 of the photo paper for the printer itself. And this is just a little case that you can keep your pictures out of, out of the, um, the elements, I guess you would say, but just to keep hands and handles off of them. They're just like any other photo paper that, you know, a lot of handling gives it lots of fingerprints and smudges. So let's go into the printer. I'm going to go ahead and load it up with some paper for you, but this is it. This is the sprocket, as you can see here. And on the back, it tells you that it is a zinc printer. Can you see that? And what that means is a zero ink. There is no ink in the printer itself. The ink is actually in the paper, the paper that, um, this paper here, the photo paper. So I'm going to open it up. It's really easy to open. It opens, um, it's held together with just some really small magnets. And then I went ahead and pre-cut the top of this photo paper so I wouldn't struggle with it. But all of the photo paper are going to come with this card on the top. And that is just used so that the, the printer recognizes it as the correct paper. And you can see I already have one from the first pack I opened in there. And see how easy it was to close because it's closing with magnets. So I'm going to reach around back. And I'm going to turn it on. Okay. And you hear it making some noise. And you can see there's different, mine is flashing different colors here. Um, everything's fine with it. You can actually, when you're setting the printer up, choose the color. I don't know if you can tell, but I cho chose blue to be the, the color here on the outside of the printer. And it should pick up on that blue piece and um, push that on out. Next, I'm going to go into my phone. You do have to download an app. the Sprocket app. The cool thing about this is you're able to go into your photo gallery on your phone, into Instagram. You can, you can um, download your photos from Instagram and Facebook. So hold on just a second. I put that paper in upside down. Oh, there you go. All right. So there, there we are. You can see that it's on. So once again, I went into the app, and let me go to Instagram because that's where I put the most of my photos. Um, this, this is just pictures you can see that I've recently posted on Instagram. And let me just use one of my cur current whips, or let me see. I'm going to go through just a second. Let me go into my gallery. I took some pictures of some threads the other day. This is not going as smooth as I thought. <laughs> uh, we'll go back to here. So I'm just going to click on this, and it's just a picture of my most recent work in progress. 
and then I'm going to hit the printer button. You can also put text on your, your pictures, um, dots, um, depending on how you took the picture and oriented it with your phone camera, whether you were holding it vertically or horizontally, will also affect the way that the pictures actually print out, which is going to be good um, in one of the crafting ideas that I have. So you hear it working? So this is it. So you can see on my picture on my camera how crisp it is. I did use a filter on this photo within Instagram, so I toned it down just a tad. But here's the photo, and then here is the zinc printed version of the photo. So it's actually like this. So if you were a teen in the 80s, you'll remember the old Polaroid cameras. These photos are a good bit more clear than the Polaroid pictures, but at the same time, they do have an aged kind of vintage, or if you want to say they have a, um, a filter, their own little filter. So they're not going to be crisp and clear, but you can see in the photo itself, if you look, you can see my stitches. So it does pretty well for just a small pocket piece. So there's that. So if you have any questions, you can just put them below. I purchased all these things on, on Amazon. I'm an Amazonian. <laughs> I will make sure I link them below in the description box for you to see. I'm going to go into how I'm going to use some of these photos because as my husband asks, what does that printer have to do with cross stitch? Let me show you. I'm going to move these things out of the way. And, and let me go into this. This is the case for the printer. So I'm going to turn it off really quick. And I'm going to slip it in its pouch. And it's just a zipper pouch. It's pretty sturdy, so if you drop it, it shouldn't damage it, I wouldn't think. I think it was like $6.99 for this. Um, and like I said, I'll link the... Um, the printer and the photos below. So I showed this on my video yesterday so everyone could see how I'm going to use the pictures to journal. This is February, my February stitching, and I'm using stickers just to show each time I work on my current piece. And I'm trying to monogamy, monogamy, I'm, monog I'm a monogamous stitcher at the moment. So I'm working only on Rose Quaker. And so I, you can see right here last week, um, on Thursday, this was my progress photo. I had just finished this motif. So I used that to update where I was in my stitching of that piece. And I made a few notes, like we attended a Joe Bonamassa concert Saturday. And with the stickers, you can see here I put the name of the pattern, the designer and what day I started the design or the piece and finished and of course that's open because it's not finished I put one of the stickers beside it so I could flip back and know everywhere there is a heart is where I have worked on Rose Quaker and this is and that keeps me it just works for me um, I do like lists I like to check them off it's like a small accomplishment um, but at the same time I like keeping up with how long it takes me to stitch something or how many days I've stitched you know stitched on it before I move on to something else or when I started something so this is going to be perfect for me and I love having the ability to use these photos of course you can cut them down and like I said if you orient your when you take a picture with your phone if you take it in the upright position you know you're going to get a picture this size but if you take it this way the photo is going to have the bars on the side and you're only going to have a small area. That's going to work great for another idea I have. I've been making these floss rings since last year and I use these tags 
to put when I started the item when I finished it. But look, I've put a picture of my little family there. But you can also put pictures of your stitching there or a picture of the piece that you're currently working on or, or that the threads that are on the ring, they belong to, say, Rose Quaker. And you have a picture of Rose Quaker there. What if I started a piece and I'm doing a stitch along with Diana? I could cut this picture down and I could put a picture of Diana and I on, the, on there as a reminder that I'm doing a stitch along with Diana. That's just one idea. This is another idea. And my third idea would be just with the same instance with taking a picture the floss rings that Michelle Rudy did a tutorial this week on the floss rings. Why can't we take, make a floss ring, say, out of Diana's face or out of Karen's face or a child? She had a great idea of using magazines, Michelle did. Well, what about using portions of your stitching? Or I had a picture of threads that I had taken last week when I was doing a floss toss. I could make a small thread ring using a picture of those threads and putting them on one of these. So those are just three of the ideas that I've come up with. Like I said, if you have um, a few of your own, please share them. I hope you enjoyed this quick review. I hope you are inspired and have some ideas with your own. And like I said, please share them because others will read your comment than just me. So you, everyone have a great day. Happy President's Day. And I will see you this weekend. Bye-bye.